offended that none of you have any idea who I am. It's time to elect John Kerry. I accept your nomination to run and serve with Barack Obama. With great honor and pleasure, I accept. We own the finish line. I accept this nomination for president. 44 years of Joe Biden at Democratic National Conventions. Welcome back to State of the Union. And tomorrow we're going to see a new face as Biden passes the torch to his vice president, Kamala Harris. My panel is here. Uh, David, what are we expecting from Joe Biden when he speaks tomorrow night? Well, I think he's he's obviously going to talk a little bit about what he's done. Uh, but hopefully he'll talk about Kamala Harris in the future. Um, this is an awkward pivot, right? Because he's getting off the stage. It was uh, not necessarily what he planned. He planned to be speaking Thursday night. But the service he can perform to her is talk about her and the future uh, as much as he talks about himself uh, and let others talk about him. And uh, we'll see. Uh, and we should note uh, there is some new polling uh, suggesting, also very positive for Kamala Harris, I'm going to come to you on the polling. Uh, there's the ABC News uh, Washington Post poll that had her at 49 percent over Trump, 45 percent uh, nationally among registered voters. That's outside the margin of error. That's the first time she's polled ahead of him outside the margin of error. And then a new poll from CBS, Harris 51 percent, Trump 48 percent uh, among registered voters nationally. Again, national polls don't matter as much as the state by state, but still it is indicative of something. What, what are you seeing in the polls? So what I think it's indicative of is a lot of voters who had sat on the sidelines in a Trump versus Biden rematch, uh, deciding that they want to put their name down for voting for Harris for the moment. But I wouldn't say these are fully committed folks. If you look at a lot of these polls and you compare July to August, Donald Trump's share of the vote hasn't actually shrunk by that much. And in some cases, it's stayed the same or gone up. It is Harris's numbers that look very different from Biden's. She's taking away from RFK Jr. She's bringing in some more of those undecideds. So the question will be with this convention, does she deliver a message that can secure those voters to her? What kind of a story does she tell to the Americans who don't know that much about her? They know they don't like the policies they've seen under President Biden. They don't feel like the country's on the right track. And they want to know, is she actually going to be a turning of the page in some way? That can she do that? I mean, that's that it's true that people don't know a lot about yeah. her. Uh, and I remember in 2008, this is not meant as a criticism of either Obama or Harris, but there was a degree to which people just projected their hopes and their thoughts onto him and now her that may or may not actually be accurate. It might not be accurate, but it's a great place to be as a candidate where you have the electorate who is who wants to be a part of what you're building, who wants to be some a part of something bigger than themselves or the candidate itself. And so I think Joe Biden should acknowledge the success of his presidency, but not just talk about the future, but why he picked her to be his number two. He can start to credentialize her as a leader, as what it's the type of person he, he's seen her before with his the relationship she had with his son, Bo. So humanize her, but then two, talk about her, her integrity, her ability to make calculated decisions, what type of partnership they had to lay the foundation for the rest of the night to be introduced, the, introduce the country to Kamala Harris. I'll just also say a lot of people don't know a lot about a lot of vice presidents. Um, and so it's not a it's not a disadvantage because she hasn't been a good vice president. It's just the nature of the role. No, I just mean like for a nominee for a president. Oh, sure, sure. For, yeah, for a yeah, nominee yeah, sure. Because usually there's a process. Yes. Fair all. enough. It's also an, op it's an opportunity for Republicans yeah. to define her, uh, given yeah, the fact absolutely. that there's so little is known. Yeah. So she's had by far the best run for the past past month unscathed. She hasn't done a press <clears throat> conference in 28 days. She has a political Rorschach test, so people are projecting um, their hopes, their dreams, everything onto Kamala Harris. Um, uh, what Axe says is, is, is true. It's going to be a little bit of a, of a tough position here on Monday when Joe Biden, who's a part of you know this administration, he was running this administration, it's the Biden-Harris campaign. Um, the vice president's trying to project herself as an outsider, right? She doesn't really want to be tied to the former, pre the, the current president is going to be here because he's not that popular. Remember, that's why he's not on this ticket. That's why he's not here speaking on Thursday because he was so unpopular. They kicked him off and put her on. So for her to distance herself from the, the guy who put her here is a little bit of political jujitsu, right? And mm -hmm. so I, I think that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And then when she started answering his questions, she's had this incredible month and she's still tied with Donald Trump right now. And that ABC yeah. poll, he's still ahead on the economy, 
on immigration, on inflation, he's still ahead on right. those factors. So anybody that thinks this is a runaway race? Yeah, there were 11 uh, issues yeah. and she was leading on yeah. six. I think the thing that was most interesting about that poll was on the sort of personal ratings and favorable favorabilities of them as human beings. So Trump was 22 points underwater and she was in plus territory. And I think that's really big. I mean, you know, people were willing to tolerate Donald Trump, even though they didn't particularly like him because they had questions about Joe Biden. If she makes herself acceptable, yep. they're going to they're going to they're going to uh, move uh, to her. And this convention is an opportunity to do it. It is always true when you have a candidate who is not the incumbent that uh, these conventions are a lot about telling people who they are, what their values are. Bill Clinton, the man from hope, you know, the, the Obama convention was like that. That's the way, even last time, Joe Biden, th that convention was really important to Joe Biden, rooting him in the middle of the country, in middle America, his values, his attachment to faith, to, to the military and so on. Uh, so this is an opportunity for, and how different will this convention be than it would have been yeah, you know, had Jake, it been a Biden convention? To, to that point, Donald Trump has a, had a great line at the press conference of Bedminster. He said, you know, Kamala Harris keeps saying she's going be ready on day one to take on these problems. Her day one was three and a half years ago. Right. Why not take care of it right but, now? But That's she benefits a great greatly. In that ABC Washington Post poll, one of the questions they asked was, do you think right. that Kamala Harris has had a lot of influence over Biden's economic policies, immigration policies? Only a third of voters said they thought she had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, so that does mean it's a bit of a blank right. sheet of paper. To I, what I, extent does Biden I say, yes, I, she was right I don't hear Biden, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't hear Trump talking about the Pence years. Okay. Right, exactly. He can't. But he's so, not running. But, Pence is the yeah, nominee. Well, I don't ask why. I don't think you want that answer. But I will just say, when, it, when you look back in this arena, I think one of the things that Kamala Harris can do, like no one else, is say, this is what America looks like. And you can be a part. This is like, we want you to, we want to build this big tent party. We want to build this big tent coalition. It doesn't matter if you come from mid the Midwest or the coast. You can be a part of this, and that'll speak to independent and voters. On, on that issue, Jamie Gangell is reporting uh, that on Thursday night, uh, Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, former Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger, who's from uh, Chicago, uh, is going to speak and endorse uh, Kamala Harris. Um, he, he's, he, I don't think that he agrees with Kamala Harris on very much, mm -hmm. but he is one of the Republicans like Liz Cheney and others who sees Trump as such an existential threat to the United States. Does that kind of endorsement have an impact? Well, you put that up against, say, Doug Ducey of Arizona this week, who's somebody who has been kind of, I would maybe not critical, maybe not the right word, but that may have been a surprise to people to see Doug Ducey say, I'm endorsing Kerry Lake and, and Donald Trump. So right now there is really a divide where for among those Republicans who have been critical of Donald Trump, to what extent does Kamala Harris sort of force you to say, you're in or you're out. This is a moment of clear division and clear difference between these two candidates. And I, so while you do have the Adam Kinzingers who are leaving, you do have also the folks like, say, a Doug Ducey who say, I haven't liked Trump in the past, or but Governor I have Sununa. to go with him now. Well, the question is, <laughs> yeah. does that work for, you know, you had Senator Burr who voted for impeachment saying, yeah, well, I'm going to be for him, even though I thought he was guilty of high crimes and misdemeanors. I don't know if at the end of the day that that is that. The double if haters, though, are going yeah. more towards Kamala Harris than they are Donald Trump. And that's a good thing for Thanks her. Thanks one and all for being here. And